So I want to thank everybody for their support uh, with uh, my announcement being on Penn & Teller's Fool Us. Uh, it's been already overwhelming, uh, you know, the people coming out of the woodworks. Uh, it's such an amazing thing to have done this because, you know, not having my venues to perform at, uh, at least I have this opportunity to to share my magic with everybody. So uh, it's, you know, been an emotional roller coaster already, and and I want to thank everybody for for all the 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 nice well wishes and uh, the excitement of this appearance. Uh, many people have posted about uh, that that I had some concerns about. Uh, the show structures uh, that I had mentioned before in different podcasts and uh, you know you really can't judge somebody until you walk a mile in their shoes. I had voiced my concerns with pop culture treating magic as a puzzle or a game, something to be solved and I still agree with these things. So why did I still do the show? I mean to be honest there was still a little bit of validation for myself uh, to really put my magic to the test. Uh, not really my magic, I mean, I, working with David Blaine, I knew the magic was good. I already had enough validation uh, seeing my magic on that uh, level of a stage, but there was something about doing it myself and, and seeing how people react to really see if I could test my own nerves, if I can go out there and perform in that type of venue. And I have a whole new respect for Penn and Teller. You know, looking back at their career, uh, they really have done it all. They've done close-up, street magic, you know, parlor magic, stage magic, grand illusions. They've done books and game shows now and, and uh, podcasts and documentaries. Uh, you know, they appeared on an episode of Scooby-Doo, you know. You know, they, the list goes on and on. They, they really, and they've done them all successfully. My criticisms were really about challenging myself. You know, I have criticism about every theater. Uh, there's problems with even restaurant magic that I love. Uh, you know, I never thought you could prove to somebody on television that what you're doing was real, that this ring was really solid, that, that, that this person wasn't stooged. Uh, but then working with David Blaine, we decided to focus on the reactions and celebrate that and we made a like a documentary about people enjoying magic uh finding a way around that issue uh when it comes to uh, theater magic uh, i never liked the fact that i could give to them but i couldn't get much back that they, i didn't really connect with them uh you know because there was this fourth wall that separated us and there was such a big distance but then I started working in like a small theater show with a couple of friends. Uh, we'd go out and do these 300-seat theaters, and uh, it, it was challenging, and it took me a while to get comfortable and find ways to connect with an audience. Uh, when it comes to virtual magic, which uh, I now do, um, I, I never thought that that was the proper venue uh, because there's this disconnect. There's this... I, you know, is there camera tricks involved and things like that, and why should I trust it? But I found a way to address all these things because of the criticism. So when you look at a criticism, you don't want that to be a wall that prevents you from in, you know, entertaining that. Actually, it should be a challenge that forces you to entertain it. You but know? you would never have figured out the answers if you haven't tried. So that was a really a big challenge for me uh, in, in all of these venues that, that I had to try, that I had to uh, go out there and, and do it so I can really come away with knowing why I, I didn't like something. But in the end, I actually found a lot more good than bad. With, with virtual magic, that's a totally different theater. You should not just take the tricks you do in close-up magic and try to present them in virtual magic because that won't work and and on that stage uh, you know it, it is a, a total different experience and we'll talk about 
uh, that experience more, but I really wanted to to not really focus on fooling, not really focus on, on a puzzle, but really focus on the moment and being in that moment uh, with Penn and Teller in that venue and just owning it and uh, treating it with the respect that it deserves because this show is in reality a showcase show in disguise as, as a game show. It is an actual, you know, competition, but it is, uh, it's really about celebrating good magic. And after they've done hundreds of shows, they don't need to do this anymore. They're really doing it, I feel. They're doing it for us magicians. They're creating a platform that us magicians can share our magic with the world. You know, they, they could just let that show be rerun forever and they'd be fine. They're really doing this to help out the magic community, the magic world, and, you know, seeing the production and, and the spirit of which they uh, always say complimentary things about the magicians, uh, it really is uh, uh, a, a blessing for all of us to to even to just appear on the show it's uh, it's you know just a, a wonderful experience <laughs>